Direct from Foxborough, Massachusetts, the gem of Norfolk County, and taped at the studios of Foxborough Cable Access, it's Foxborough Central. And here's your host, Bob and Hickey. Welcome to a special election edition of Foxborough Central. I'm Bob Hickey, your host, thanking you for taking a little bit of time to join with me and my guests as we talk about the people, places, and events that make Foxborough special. For this election special, I'm with school committee candidate, Martha Slattery. Martha, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Doing well, so good to see you again. I know, back, we, back on the trail. I was gonna say, we've been here before. You yeah. are a long time servant of the town and you were elected, gosh. Uh, five times. Five times, 15 years you've served in the yeah. Foxborough School Committee. Yeah. And you're back for more. Yeah, it was a pleasure, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think there's still a lot of things we need to do, we need to stay on top of. And uh, I'm ready to get back in there mm -hmm. if it's possible. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember working back when I was a selectman, so I know that you mm -hmm. definitely have the chops. Let's talk about some of the uh, reasons why. Why are you running again? Well, I, you know, there was a lot of things that we accomplished when I was on the school committee as a committee. And uh, I know we have the borough renovation mm -hmm. project coming up, and you need to be able to sell it to the town. And I think we did an excellent job when it came to the high school program. When I was chair, I initiated the first night that we look into um, getting our plans in order so that when money was available, we'd be the first ones out of the gate, not the last ones. And we were one of 24. And I know when uh, we probably couldn't have picked a better time to do that project because a lot of the things that we needed to do at that school came in under budget. So there was a fair amount of, of money left over. Of course, I took my hits when we didn't turn that money back to the town because unfortunately, what you needed to do and what you still needed to do to maintain that school, we would have been going back to CIP every year so that when one night I, I suggested that we have um, the selectmen, the advisory committee, and the building committee take a walk with us through that school mm -hmm. to see all the other projects that still needed to be done. And um, it, it got a good response because we went back and we were able to do a lot of things for that high school. Otherwise, we would have been coming back every year to CIP trying to bring that school back up. But when we first went into that project, that science lab was an absolute disgrace. We had kids sitting in classrooms with coats and gloves on, yep. and that's no way to learn. You, don't, you just don't learn in that kind of environment. So when you look at what we had and what we have now, I mean, this, the school is in great shape. I love talking a little government with you. We've had these conversations yeah. before, uh, both in official capacity and just uh, shooting the breeze by the water cooler. Uh, CIP, of course, is the capital improvement yep. uh, project uh, budget that, that is funded by the town, typically from an overage in the budget or uh, underspending from a uh, two-year cycle prior before. And that's how we as a community pay for uh, a lot of the uh, larger ticket items yep. that, uh, that, that are you know, really are, are essential but are outside of a quote unquote operating budget. And of course the town gets to vote on that at town meeting, special, right. uh, the annual town meeting, which this year will be on May 9th. And of course, Martha Slattery running for school committee, we want everybody to know about May 2nd because that is the day of the election okay, and we should hope that everybody's gonna come out and vote. Yeah. You had mentioned about the high school renovation project and uh, back when the state originally froze the funding back mm -hmm. in the early 2000s for the state reimbursement program. That's when the ducks had to be gotten in a row, so that way when the money was released uh, and the project was on the board for being funded, that you'd be ready to go, and that's what you're that's referring right. to, of course. Well, and, that, and that science department, that it's science lab was horrible then. Oh. It's beautiful now, so yeah. congratulations on the, on the work that was done for everybody that did it, but in particular, that piece of it was sort of the shining example of what needed to be done at that school. Well, not only that, but there was a lot of legwork that needed to be done. I know we were in at the legislature for one of their open houses and got to meet with um, the, the senator at that time that was in charge of, of school funding. And back then, well, when we did the Ahern School and I was on board on the school committee at that time, you had to do a renovation and expansion in order to get any money. And you also felt as though you were punished because 
your school was in better shape than somebody else's. So when you saw some of the schools and they had holes in their floor and the, you know, the windows were broken, you know, certainly money's gonna go there, but we also stress to them that we shouldn't be punished right. for maintaining our, our schools. And that was one of my key things when I was on there, that to get in someone like Michael Leary and, and turn this around and, and make sure that every day when our kids came into those schools, they, they were sparkling. Yeah. And, and I think they did a great job. In, in the summer, their painting program, we did a lot to maintain those schools. And I think that that was to our advantage. You know, and you raise a good point, and the problem with Proposition 2.5, the, the benefit, of course, is that uh, we, we're relatively assured that our uh, property taxes are not going to uh, right. raise exponentially uh, year over year. But the problem then becomes that you do get a certain segment of communities that are rewarded for not devoting money towards maintenance. And whether it's uh, intentionally or just the, the, the bald fact that operating budgets are, are strained, you're right, the communities that do put the attention yeah. and the time and the effort well, the, the into the maintenance. The money is tight. We see that penalized. ourselves. Because when you have a choice over maintaining a building or buying books, you're going to buy books. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, all the cities and towns are taxed in a different way. And, and we're, we're fortunate that we're able to do a lot more in this town because of the money that we have coming in. But it, it still should never be the point that you've got to rob Peter to pay Paul. And unfortunately, a lot of the schools have gotten themselves in that position. But we're fortunate enough that we're maintaining our buildings. You, you won't see them deteriorate. So speaking of that, some of the big issues that are coming up for Foxborough Public Schools that are going to be a front and center on the school committee. I, I suppose the first one I've been hearing about the Burl Elementary School renovation. Oh. What is that? What's going on? Well, you know, I, I haven't seen their entire list. I know they were talking about roof and and there's just a lot of, it, it's on the list. I haven't really looked mm -hmm. at it, to tell you the truth. Back when we were talking about it, we had a, a list of things that needed to be done. But that sounds like that's the next school that's up on the wheel as yes. far as having some major yes. attention. And then after it. that, we'll be going down to the, the Taylor School and, and seeing what needs to be done. Okay. I mean, if you have a roof that's not going to work anymore and it's going to leak, it's going to ruin your building. Yes, we've, we've, we've seen the roof issues before in this town, haven't yeah. we? Yeah, yes. we really have. Uh, so I'm speaking, of course, with Martha Slattery, a longtime veteran of the school committee looking to come back for a sixth term. She needs your vote. If you want to find out more about Martha and her campaign, you can friend her on Facebook. She does do Facebook. Yeah. Uh, she, she and I both have uh, struggled mightily to uh, come into the, <laughs> to the 2010s, and I think we're both there. Maybe, maybe you're a little I bit better at it than I am. I do than I do talking. Yeah, on, I'm, I'm more of a lurker. You're right. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, you can get a hold of her directly. I've always had great success getting a hold of Martha, and she always calls me back at area code 508-941-9768. That's your direct cell. So she's not afraid to talk to you, and if you don't want to talk in person, you want to do it by email. Uh, Martha Slattery at gmail.com. So Martha, uh, given that you're so accessible, if I were to call you up and say, hey, Martha, what are the big things going on in the public schools today that you think you want to tackle? What would they be? Well, I, I, I got a phone call from someone and I've listened to one of my children who has children in the school system. You know, I graduated from, from Foxborough High, my five kids have, and now I have nine grandchildren in the system, one of which that's graduated. And they've gotten a tremendous education here. And back when I first was on the committee was when Ed Reform was coming into place. And we did a lot. You know, when you think about, we have the neighborhood school system here in, in Foxborough that we have three small elementary schools. And when I sat on the committee, I was very adamant that each school should have the same ability. And, you know, sometimes you get into a contest when they were doing the MCAS and this school did better than this school. Well, you have to make sure that every school has a level playing field so that when it comes to technology, when it comes to books, when it comes to teachers, when it comes to class size, so that when these kids come together at the middle school, they're on a level playing field. So when Ed Reform came along, they talked about changing the curriculum here in Massachusetts. And it was probably long overdue because I can remember one of my nieces in another town when it came to the, the SATs, and my daughter came home and was quite frustrated that some of the questions that were on the SATs, they had never had, mm -hmm. and they weren't going to get them until the next semester. So, and my other niece in a neighboring town, she thought they were a breeze because she had already had that. Right. So I, I think it was very important for us to, across the state, have a curriculum that, again, when they graduated from high school and went off to college, they were on a level playing field. And, you know, it had its growing pains, and, and MCAS, I'm not, I'm still not a huge fan of that because 
I think it discriminates against children in, in public education. Because really? when you think about it, if you're private school, if you're parochial school, if you're home school, you don't have to take MCAS. And you can go on to a college and it's not like somebody saying, well, here's a certificate of attendance. So, and, and I think, you know, when I look back at MCAS when it came out and what the teachers went through afterwards, they would sit down and they would go through every question line by line and figure out how many kids across the board got that wrong. And what was it in that question that, that they didn't get? And it was a, like a word or something mm -hmm. that the state was using, but we weren't. And all I kept thinking was, my God, what are we doing? We're teaching to a test. Well, it, indeed, teaching yeah. the test is exactly the uh, term. And unfortunately, that test became the funding uh, right. source and uh, failure to maintain certain levels also meant that the state could come in and yeah. do some additional work. So Well, they, they would come in and take over your school, essentially, right. if you weren't up to par. But when you, when you look around the state, you know, sometimes the legislators slit in their ivory tower and they make all these mandates. But you know what? If you're not going to back it up with money, if you're not going to back it up with coming out and seeing what the teachers are dealing in the classrooms, we used to have leveling. Now we have heterogeneous classes where everybody is mixed in together, which is wonderful because we all have to go out in the world together. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you know, when you talk about trying to meet the needs of every student, I think the teachers are, are really challenged because if you have one that's a little bit accelerated or another child that needs a little bit more help, they're spreading themselves around. So by keeping class size down, we are able to help these children. But it's a challenge. Mm. It is a challenge indeed. So speaking of challenges, uh, you're up for the challenge. And so what would be yeah. the maybe the top one or two things you'd want to tackle as soon as you got into office? Well, if you were I think there's a lot of, you know, the um, core curriculum is coming up on the ballot. And uh, are you referring to the Common Core? Common Core. Mm -hmm. And so you say it's coming up on the ballot. Is that at the state well, level? Well, apparently it's going to be uh, it's a referendum question. OK. So in order to decide whether or not you want to con continue with it. And surprisingly enough, um, when that came about was because now everybody in the federal government wants all the states on a level playing field. Right. And surprisingly enough, a lot of what is in place was even, I don't know, shadowed after get what we did here in Massachusetts because our students were doing so well. Mm -hmm. So even if they withdraw or vote against this, we will still have the same frameworks here in Massachusetts because they are what they are. So I, I think we just have to take a long, hard look at, you know, what are the issues? What are the concerns of the parents? You know, because a lot of people aren't happy with it. But surprisingly enough, the frameworks go along with, with what we did. Some people are saying go back to the frameworks that we had, but essentially they're just carried we over. We really haven't gone that far no, straight. We haven't from gone them. that far mm. afield from them. So I, I, I think, you know, maybe it's time to sit down with the parents. Bring them in. Let's have a discussion. See what your concerns are, and and try to work through it. You know, I've always and, and again I alluded to this earlier. I uh, used to be a selectman in this town, and I always joked that you know, my job might have issues, but nobody gets more passionate or excited than a parent does about their child. And so I always well, have great respect for the school committee members because you you hold our education in the hands and, and your decisions have, have immediate impact. Yeah. And so I uh, always have great respect for that. So to that end, um, you had some, some pretty uh, significant achievements when you were in the seat before. Do you have maybe a second to touch on one or two of those? Well, I, one of the things was our um, policies were so outdated that were actually embarrassing. We had a book that had more different sheets of paper from, from day one. So. We initiated a, um, a process where we would revamp the policy book. We brought in MCAS to oversee it, and the committee was obliged to come every week or so, and we sat down and we did that from, from top to bottom and mm -hmm. revamped it. And then um, the Mass Association of School Committees helped us put it the way it's supposed to be. We, we didn't have policies that we should have had, and it was really embarrassing when you looked at how little we had compared to what we needed statewide. So that was probably one of our biggest accomplishments, that okay. and the high school project, um, working through um, ed reform and making sure that we have the tools not only for the students but for the teachers. You know, you can't hamper teachers and not give them the tools so that they can succeed. So, you know, spreading the money around, being um, understanding of the taxpayers in this town, I, I just think, I think we did a great job. 
And it's been a, a, a legacy uh, of that cooperation from back when you and I yeah. were doing this in the beginning where uh, the split is uh, an, an equitable one and it's one that is uh, pretty much adhered to. And I think it's served the town well to have that type of cooperative effort yeah. between, um, in, particularly with the current boards, um, it, it seems to be continuing today and you've got great support people, a super superintendent, um, mm. uh, business director. Well, uh, it's funny because when we were looking for the superintendent, I was chair at the time, um, I said, you know, we can do this ourselves, and everybody gasped, you know. I said, why are we going to waste $20,000? We know what we want. We can put together, and I, you know, people put in their names, and I, I picked a search committee. And, and I think probably one of the things that I really enjoyed was we came together as a committee. We left as friends, and we brought in two wonderful superintendents that helped turn the system around mm -hmm. and, and, you know, get morale back where it needed to be, and people wanted to come to work and they wanted to do a good job. And I think that's important. And we brought in um, an assistant superintendent. We have a new high school principal. I, those are all accomplishments that I'm very proud of. And we have, I think we have one of the best teams in place. And that doesn't come easy. You have to have a committee that people are willing to come for. When I look back at how many people put their names in the pool, it was astounding. Hmm. And we did it without paying anybody anything. It probably cost us $2,500 or something for, um, to put ads out through um, the Mass Association sure. of School Committees. Sure. But we've probably saved this town $50,000, $60,000 because we didn't have to go out and do horrendous search committees. Well, a lot of work with good results. Absolutely. Martha, we are so out of time. I can't believe it. I'm okay. going to give you the last word. But of course, while Martha collects her thoughts, they give us her final Huzzah, I'm going to give you that you can always get in touch with Martha by becoming your friend on Facebook. Uh, you can also uh, get a hold of her cell number at fairy code 508-941-9768, or you can reach out to her by email at marthaslattery at gmail.com. Martha, I want to thank you for joining us, and please mm -hmm. share with us uh, one final word for why you want to be well, on the Foxborough School Committee once again. I think anybody who knows me understands that I have a vested interest in this town. Having lived here, raised my children here, and now watching, I'm very fortunate that four of my married children are raising their children in this town. So that shows that they have a lot of commitment to this town. And I, I think by getting back on the school committee, I just want to make sure that every child has a good education. And I've always told parents, you are their best advocate. You know them better than anybody else. And we need to listen to you. We need to work with you. And I think that's what's important. And it's also, you know, it's ironic, and, and you know it. It's much easier to sit on that side of the table than it is to sit on this side of the table. Sometimes you make tough choices, and sometimes you don't please people. But it isn't what you say. It's how you say it. And I, I think when you can make people understand and appreciate the position you're in, you're not going to please everybody. But there's no reason why you can't come to some understanding. That is well said, Martha. And I like sitting on my side of the table and talking <laughs> to you folks at home. Thank you for joining us and watching as Martha Slattery shares her thoughts and ideas as why she should be on the school committee. If you agree, of course, come out to the polls on May 2nd. Your vote is important. Every vote counts, as yep. we've seen uh, from some recent close elections. On behalf of all the volunteers here at Foxburg Cable Access, Thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the polls on May 2nd. Don't forget to tune in for live election night coverage as they count the ballots when we bring you the winners. Take care, Foxborough. Yep.